Good day, everybody, and uh, welcome to In My Kitchen with Martin Kobold. And I'm very pleased to, to be able to introduce to you two very, very good chefs and very good friends of mine. Uh, the one uh, is currently sitting in Jenai with his uh, chef, Yugesh Aurora. Uh, he is the uh, executive director of a company called The Chef's Table. Uh, so welcome, welcome, Chef uh, uh, Yugesh. Thank you very much to my program. And on the other side, we've got uh, Chef James Corza, who is the executive chef of the Senton, Senton Convention Center. And at the same time, none the least, is the president of the South African Chefs Association. Um, so I'm very honored to have him on here today as well. And it's so nice to see to have like two different continents. We've got India and we've got Africa represented in that little video podcast now. And uh, it would be great to have two different opinions or most probably knowing us chefs in our industry will most probably have all the same opinion, uh, but with maybe some nice new creative ideas where we can learn from each other. So Yogesh, I'm going to pose the first question to you. Um, obviously the main theme these days and in everybody's mind is COVID-19, um, the coronavirus, which hit our hospitality industry globally very, very hard. And uh, so I just would like to ask you just quick in a couple of words, a couple of lines, but there's no time pressure. You can add on as much as you want. But from your perspective, what can we in the hospitality industry expect for the next two or three years? See, uh, namaste, first of all, all of you. Uh, I'm from India. Unfortunately, in India, it is hit very bad. You know, it, it's very hard now. Uh, there are two reasons for that. You know, India is in uh, a tropical country, first of all. And second thing, the population, the population of India is very high. We have around uh, 100 crore population in India. And there are so many clusters around, you know. So to control the COVID, it, it becomes too difficult for the government. Uh, yes, the government is trying to uh, do many things by locking down or uh, there are certain rules and other things. But unfortunately, it's not very easy. Even people need to understand because uh, unlike you said, you, you, are, you are from Austria, the population is very less and still people are going for the COVID test. In India, it's not mandatory, you know, unless and until you come in contact with any COVID person, then it's mandatory for you to go and have a COVID test because uh, we don't have so much, so many doctors or nurses to take care of 100 crore population, you know, but fortunately enough, India... Uh, being uh, uh, such a big country, still uh, they are able to control it quite okay. I'm not saying it very well, but quite okay. As far as the hotel industry is concerned, I think uh, because of uh, the traveling, the, uh, the people are not moving around, the foreign countries, the flights are not uh, operational, the business is down. So the hotel industry is doing very badly at present. Uh, last year it was totally closed. Now I think uh, since last uh, four or five months the the occupancy is, is increasing. It was around twenty percent, but now it is around forty percent in India. But again, the foreign clients are not there, but uh, hotels are trying to uh, you know attract the local crowds. You know because local crowds can come and experience the five star standards with the lower rates. The APC has gone down. For example, if the APC was around hundred dollars earlier, the APC it is gone down to 30 or 40 dollars, including breakfast and dinner. They are offering them because they have to ensure that the break even is taken care. That's the thing going on in yeah. India. I think next two years it will be a tough time, you know. That's my thinking. Sure. Okay. All right. Okay, James, let's go straight over to you. What, what, what do you think what we can expect in the next years to come? And obviously, Africa, South Africa uh, from your country is, has been hit very hard. And it's very similar uh, uh, a situation than in India, I suppose, you know, where there's the population is very, very high. And, um, you know, support from the government, yes, is there, but it's not that, that great. So what do you think? What, what, what can we expect the next two years? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Martin, for, for, for the honor of uh, inviting me uh, onto this uh, panel. Uh, from a South African point of view or context, uh, we almost the same as India, but I think the government has managed to, to control the virus in somewhat. 
But uh, with uh, the popping out of this uh, uh, second variant, it worked against us. So I think we've been banned from, I think, uh, 105 countries now. Yeah. So uh, from the tourism hospitality point of view, it's quite a disaster. It's quite a disaster. But, uh, you know, like everybody else, we try to, to look, to, re, to, to reimagine, you know, uh, to reinvent the wheel. So what's happening is, uh, is that uh, we, we, we're advocating for more local, like uh, uh, localization, uh, more tourists uh, looking inside of our country, trying to make sure that uh, we, we, we get by. That's how it is. But uh, unfortunately, in terms of hospitality, almost, almost 75% of our, of our hotels, restaurants, caterings are closed. So it's, it's, it's kind of bad. But uh, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that uh, in the next two years we'll be fine. But uh, it's going to be a constricted kind of market that's going to open up because, uh, like you, you know, uh, in South Africa or in Africa point of view, government doesn't subsidize uh, uh, most of our, of, of our restaurants or hotels. So it's, it's, it's a little bit of a, a struggle. If you didn't have a, a bigger bank balance or reserves, it's going to be difficult for you to, to, to come back. So it's going to take a, a while for, for us to, to, to have the boom that you used to have before. So from, uh, from the restaurant operations point of view, I think we'll be hovering between 50 and 60% of, uh, of uh, open restaurants. That will impact negatively as well into our employment status uh, statistics, as well as our, you know, from the, our education, from the culinary side. It will impact as well in how we, we, uh, we mitigate, uh, you know, solutions for, for, for the young guys to come and take, uh, uh, you know, hospitality as a, as a career. But uh, I think that we'll be okay, we'll recover. There have been uh, some, uh, from government point of view, there's been a lot of recovery strategies. And uh, we see our minister, she's all over the, 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 the provinces of South Africa trying to reignite, you know, uh, you know, hospitality and get the people back into believing that uh, we can travel again. So we need to go back out there and, uh, and enjoy ourselves regardless of uh, the, the COVID <laughs> that is trying to isolate us. We are human beings. We, we're supposed to be, you know, you know, togetherness and, uh, you know, and meet and greet. So uh, our, our minister, she's really trying to go out there and make sure that it's still okay to go out there and support the local uh, tourism industry. Yeah, sure. No, 100%. Very wise words from you there, uh, Chef James. Uh, obviously, you know, I mean, you, you said, you know, you come across very positive for the industry. And, uh, you know, and there's a way forward. And there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So, but is there any specific points you would think for the hospitality industry or we chefs need to focus on the next couple of months, the next year to actually move forward? Uh, from my side, I, I believe that collaboration is key and helping each other is key. You know, this thing of, uh, you know, our chefs say our behavior is more like uh, egoistic. If you want to put it arrogant, you know, we believe in doing things my way. I think that must, must uh, go out of the window now. It's, it's no longer happen now. Maybe we can reignite that in 10 years time. For us now to make sure that uh, our career is uh, held uh, to the most extreme, we must come together and try and, and help each other and be for one another. And uh, again, it's difficult to, 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 to talk to a chef you know, to change some particular things about, uh, you know, his beliefs, his ideologies. I think uh, that's another thing that uh, is uh, really affecting us, that we need to change our mindset because of uh, what we're facing, because it's a global phenomenon. It's a global problem that we're facing right now. So I'm saying this is because I'm thinking that uh, the menus must change. We have to, uh, to put up menu or menu offerings for what the people out there want. For an example, our target market now is, uh, the, to is, is uh, the local tourists. I'm, I'm asking all the chefs that, uh, you know, for you to, to, to be sustainable as a business, you must produce or give people what they want. You know, I understand 
the tourism element, uh, the, the international tourist element that uh, we used to enjoy, but we don't have that anymore. So the pilot is not that advanced as we used to know. It. So the pilot, we have to grow with the pilot. So we have to go back to basics and offer quality, minimal stuff that people want to enjoy. At the same time, that is going to keep uh, uh, keep us going as a business because people come and enjoy that which we're giving them. At the same time, we are humble. You know, COVID is a, is a, is a, is a humbling kind of phenomenon. So it tells us that we must ground ourselves and go back to basics and do simplicity. simplicity. Yeah. yeah, no, I think I think that's exactly what I was thinking, you know, that, that, that little term what you just mentioned, and I, and I did applaud there while you were talking, you know, that back to basics, I think this is so, so important. And this is something where I think chefs internationally need to focus this time, you know, to go back to yeah. basics and make sure that whatever they produce is, is, is produced with passion, with love, with knowledge, and with the best produce available and, and give the people what they want. So, Chef Yugesh, what do you, what do you say to that, to that uh, thing? Do you agree or do you have any yes, other points to expose on? Yeah, 100% I agree to what Chef said and what you are mentioning. Uh, uh, same thing is around the world. It's happening. Uh, so, uh, from our side, you know, in India, most of the hotels, they have started working on the smaller menus. The morning breakfast buffets have gone because of the, uh, the pandemic, uh, the contact uh, need to be reduced. The menus have uh, become smaller, you know, they don't have a vast big menu on the uh, on the plant because they have to keep the cost again under control. It doesn't make business sense if the cost is not under control at present. You, your staff need to be multi-skilled, you know, you cannot uh, afford to have many, many chefs or many staff to make different kinds of cuisines, you know. So in case any guest wants something out of menu, it can be worked out, but then Whatever possible, we have trained the staff in such a way so they are capable of uh, making the things as per the guest liking, as Chef said, you know. Apart from that, most of the garnishes and other things are out of the menu now. We keep the things simple as far as possible. So uh, the taste is important, as Chef said, local cuisine is coming up uh, as from uh, my side also. I have a company called Chef Table Studio. Even I'm trying to promote, you know, the, the grandma's recipes or local recipes. We even had competitions to make the students feel better. You know, that's very important for us to keep the students motivated because they are already, the students who are already in the industry, it's very important for us to ensure that they don't get totally demotivated. Motivation is very important subject at present, you know. The menus, the outdoor catering is becoming more important. Certain times the hotels are trying to give the takeaways, you know, where the hotels were lacking behind earlier. Now, at present time, most of the hotels are trying to do the takeaways. So the, because the restaurant cannot get more crowded, so you can take the home, the food home, pack it nicely, and then you can enjoy at home. These are the small, small things which are very important for all of us to take care. So yeah, no, hundred percent. I think I think we, we as chefs, we got we, we got a, a major role to play. You know, um, not just in producing good meals and 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 you know upholding the the highest hygiene standards as possible or whatever. But I think it's also like and you mentioned it, and both of you actually did. You know, the the the, the local food our local culture of food, you know, the heritage of our cuisine. We, we, it's our responsibility as chefs to uphold that and not to, to play around with, 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 with dishes our grandmothers used to do uh, and, and, and try to create something different with it. You know, we need, to, we need to make sure that this stays alive, that our grandmother's recipes stay alive. But at the same time, and that comes to my next point is um, we – we sort of in a, on a do on a two edged sword, you know, where you got these two different blades there, and uh, and it's quite dangerous, you know. Like that's just my opinion, and I will ask your opinion just now. But you, you know, this COVID nineteen created so many hobby chefs around the world. You know, everybody all of a sudden became a baker. Everybody became a, a, a cook. Everybody became a, a, an extraordinary great chef and gourmet uh, a specialist, etc., etc., etc. So at the same time, we as chefs, we have got a responsibility to educate ourselves even more because now when the hospitality industry comes back, 
like it is in, 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 in South Africa, it came back fairly recently where restaurants were able to open up again. Now, all of a sudden, our customers are much more educated about food than they were before COVID-19 because they had nothing else to do than sitting at home and cook for themselves because they just couldn't go and get food. So yeah. it, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. And I'm, I'm, so, I'm sure, James, you have experienced it many times where, like, you know, maybe two years or three years ago, somebody ordered a steak, a rum steak or a sirloin steak or whatever, and they, the waiter asked them, how would you like your steak? And the, the customer would say, oh, just not bloody. I don't want blood. But now, you know, the, 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 the customer will say, now I would like to have a medium rare. And then you as a chef inside that you're making it, like you literally have it maybe for one minute too long on the stove and it's all of a sudden medium. And it comes back to the kitchen from your customer and said, no, but I've ordered medium rare. This is medium. Oh, well, hello. A couple of years ago, <laughs> we as chefs would have gone out to the table and said to the customer, this is the way you ordered it. This is the way you're going to be eating it. But those days yeah. are over, you know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. we need to stay back to basics, yes, but we also need to make sure that we understand that our customers become much more clever. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, for, for, you, you're right, Martin. I think uh, the buzzword now that's going out uh, in, the, in the hospitality uh, sector is about uh, customer experience. You know, if, if uh, you make sure that you look after your customers, you, you, you get them, you retain the customers because now it's about customer retention more than anything else. We can, we can, there's no more flash. You know, we cannot, we cannot afford to play around with, uh, with, uh, with our customers. So what you, you mentioned that, uh, which is key, is, uh, is, is a product training from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from, from staff point of view. So we, we spend a lot of time. You'll find that guys like us, exec chefs, now we're cooking. So why are we cooking? We're making sure that you're transferring, you know, the skill, the right skills to the, to the junior staff that we never did before because we believe that our next line of, uh, you know, of, of authority or associates will do that. But uh, we, we feel like because the understanding now is, is, is customer retention. So it, it, to retain the customer, you must make sure that the skill factor is really elevated into a way that is in such proportion that you cannot afford to do mistakes. If you do mistakes, you become honest about it. You don't try to hide because a customer really educated. They, like you just said, they, are, they, they know about the kitchen. So we also, right now during COVID, we, we, we promoted or we asked the chefs to, 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 to master skill themselves, not to just sit at home, to, to find maybe the way they, their weaknesses were at. So at least when you go back to, to, to activity, to actual uh, practical work, you become better, a better person. And also in terms of uh, yourself as a, as a, as a, as a as a key uh, employee in a hotel or restaurant, it's elevated and uh, you retained because of, uh, of your skill base and your knowledge base. So it's important that uh, we elevate the skill fact and do things properly. Hence, I say that uh, it's important for us to, to go back to basics, to do things right, because our customers know they are educated and their palate is really, really uh, enhanced. So we can you cannot put about the bush and try to cheat customers anymore. So <laughs> you cannot. We, we had a, in, a, in the hotel uh, last week, get a problem with the guys that, uh, you know, with scrambled eggs. A customer to tell a chef this is how a scrambled egg is made. It's embarrassing that, uh, you know, a customer will tell you that uh, this is supposed to be made this way because uh, the chef wanted to take, to take shortcuts because of the pressure. You can't do that anymore. You have to do things right. Regardless of the pressure, you can go tell the customer that it's going to take a bit, uh, maybe a delay of 10 minutes because of uh, the orders or the busyness that you have. But do it right the first time. That is the key. Exactly. Great. Yugesh, what do you got to say to that? Yeah, whatever Chef said is 100% correct. You know, because of social media nowadays, as you said, every person <laughs> is a chef now. So if you have little interest and little thing, they are trying to make things at home. And uh, on, a, on a click of a button, everything is available uh, the right way to, <laughs> to see on the screen, you know. And as Chef said, 
uh, earlier you know when the, the guests were traveling around they were more more uh, 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 you know uh, uh, more aware about the things around the world but nowadays even as even a, even a watchman of your or a security of your building he knows what is what food about you know so it's not easy for uh, the uh, normal chef to fool a guest you know it's very important as chef said they will come and tell you yes i want it in this particular way and we have to ensure that the guest have it in that particular uh, way so training as i said you know as i said earlier even the multi skilling is very important each and every staff because in place of 100 we have only 20 to 25 staff working in kitchen at present multi skilling yeah. is very important and not only multi skilling they should know the job rightly that's the reason i said the menu need to be shortened so that you don't play around with the dishes you know you have to ensure that what wherever you are strong in that particular dish try to keep those things on the menu yeah. so you don't fail there you know if you fail there then customers are not going to come back and the personal rapport with the guest is very important uh, for uh, the executive chef nowadays every executive chef i think they are on the social media they have connection with the guest the guest know them personally by name they know the guest personally by name half of the city knows you so it's important for you to uh, ensure that the 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 staff working under you are well trained and as chef said the executive chefs are working behind the range now and they are training the boys rather than yeah. sous chef or chef chef the part is training the boys yeah no 100% uh, uh, and i think you know i mean we not as chefs we we never even in the past were out in fooling in fooling our our customers but it was so so much easier in a way of 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 giving something to our customer not uh, uh not of superior quality but uh always you know the aim is always as a chef to put the best food on the table uh, on the plate for, for our customers but there were obviously situations where you know you cater for somebody who is not as knowledgeable who just doesn't they can't even boil water you know they come into our restaurant so you know but these days it's different these days people know how to boil water they know how to make scrambled eggs they know how to fry a steak they know how to how to make a roast etc 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 or making a good curry you know so so we can't we can't be complacent uh, we need to be on top of our game it's our profession and that's why it's called profession we are professionals so we need to be professional about our our job and we need to be knowledgeable about our job but you know chefs are not only knowledgeable or professional uh, or passionate but i think uh, chefs are also uh, very good in giving and and helping others and i think chef james has mentioned it uh, earlier a little bit uh, so I, i would like to go into into a cap into in, into a, into a, an area where where india and south africa and africa in general it's a very in the way of overpopulation a very poor country and there's a high percentage of poverty in both of those continents so so i'm i'm going to start with baby you you gesh because you on my screen there straight away now um from the from the uh, indian chefs association or chefs community or whatever is there a couple of things are highlighting things which you can uh, share with us uh, what the indian chefs have done for the community during this pandemic you know like soup kitchens etc some very innovative ideas and i'm sure there's a couple of very interesting ideas where other countries like for example james uh, with his association can learn something from you which was maybe uh, successful in your part of the world which maybe they can do that side so it's about about sharing it's about giving so you gesh over to you yes it's very important for us to ensure that we give back to the society whatever we have gained from society uh, india is a big country as you said and as i have, all of us are aware during the pandemic lockdown most of the hotels most of the restaurants food industry everything was closed but most of the five star hotels were, chefs were working in their kitchen making food for thousands of people you know for example the 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 nursing staff the police the the uh, the 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 people who are uh, homeless you know they used to cook food for 10 to 20000 people per kitchen and they used to go and serve it to them these things happened throughout india even uh, there are communities in india which are there to help the the uh, poor people or the needy people you know because when the the nursing or the hospital hospital staff are busy with 
busy with their patient the, the food uh, was taken care by most of the hotels and indian chefs association ifca along with all the other regional chef association has ensured that the most of the chefs were working to serve the people you know you won't believe more than millions of food packets were made in the hotel and they have served it free of cost yeah. to the uh, needy people and it's very important yeah it is indeed very it important. is indeed very important oh. From 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 the bottom of my heart, thank you very much to all the Indian chefs who who kept to kept many many thousands of Indians alive uh, during the pandemic in feeding them and and cooking yeah. nutritional meals and yeah. using their their professional skills or making sure that they get a good meal, not just some junk food, but some yeah. really good meal that keeps them the, the, uh, that keeps the nutrients going. Now, uh, James, uh, from your side, I know uh, South African Chefs Association. Had quite a few different initiatives uh, nationally. Uh, the one uh, comes to mind is the Chef is Compassion. Um, so yeah, but I'm sure there's a couple of other ones you would like to share or talk to talk a little bit uh, to us about Chefs of Compassion, that uh, Compassion, the initiative of South African Chefs Association. Uh, th th thank you, Martin. I think uh, COVID has taught us, uh, like rightly say, that uh, we supposed to you know to share what we have. I think uh, if I go a bit of uh, being a politician, say that uh, you know capitalism sometimes uh, make us forget about other people, but I think with COVID uh, it uh, brought us back to you know to ground level to say who are we? Uh, we are human beings, so you cannot uh, let another person you know go hungry. What is you have everything? So the idea that we had, we collaborated with uh, a couple of. Uh, other organization, NOSH. Uh, one of them is called NOSH uh, a Food Rescue. And uh, we formulated uh, an organization called uh, Chef with Compassion, where we 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 had hubs. Hubs is where uh, we have chefs that cook at that particular destination or, or location. And uh, that location, those chefs in that location will feed that community. So we had about 11 of those hubs I think uh, almost throughout South Africa in different uh, of our uh, regions. And uh, we had uh, another one that uh, we uh, subsidized uh, or looked after. It's called the Extreme Cuisine in Cape Town. We got a, a good friend of ours, chef friend of ours there. So we, we helped him a lot in terms of supplies and uh, also a bit uh, of cash here and there so that I will get by and to, to feed people in Cape Town. So. We, 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 we are proud to say that uh, we, we, when, when uh, the chips were down, we, we were called and we answered the call to help each other. It's not about uh, making money, uh, being chefs. It's about making sure that everybody is, uh, is, is fed, or is, is sleeps on a full stomach. Even if uh, regardless of how much money you have, we can make plans you know, or, or mitigation or solutions to get partners in to, to help out, even if it's not cash, to give us products, that which we did. We, we had companies, that, like big companies, who were cash strapped, but uh, they afforded us with, uh, you know, with simple does like, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Jess, we, we talk about uh, <laughs> maize meal, milli meal and rice. So they'll give us that soya, soya chunks and all that. Which we distributed to these uh, to these uh, uh, good people that were co were cooking or the that were cooking for for the communities. I think we've done well, but uh, I think there's still more for us to to, to do because what what we see now is that uh, with uh, a lot of uh, lockdown, tomorrow you go to level five, tomorrow you go to level whatever one, unemployment is uh, is becoming a, a, a little bit of a problem. So with an, the rise of unemployment, it means that uh, there will be a lot of, of hungry stomachs out there. So I think we need to redouble our efforts again, and restart. You know, the passion that we had at the start, we must reignite it again. And con because we really don't know when this, this pandemic is going to really stop. Because also with the vaccination that's coming in, we really don't know, you know, the, what the outcome of the vaccination is all about. So we see a lot of people with full of uncertainty. So I think, like you're saying, Chef Martin, I think the, the people out there really need us to, 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 to continue feeding them. 
I think that that's what we're going to be uh, continue doing. I hope uh, in India you continue as well, Chef. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think I think you're hundred percent right there, Chef James. I think there's there's always more we can do. You know, I think we all try to do as much as possible. Um, and as much be able to help, you know, but there's always more to do. But there's a lot of yes. chefs out there. Um, they, 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 they're just standing out. I mean, there's so many people are standing out who's yeah. doing so much. I'm not going to mention yeah. any names because this, yeah. uh, I know for sure that I'll be forgetting for forgetting a uh, hundred people, you know, because they're doing yeah. so much. But I think chefs in general are just good giving people. But I think this is yeah. part and part of our calling. We chose this profession to produce food. And like yeah. you said, it's not all about making money. It's all about making food for others. That's what we are. Yeah. And that's what we do. And I think this pandemic has taught us a hell of a lot of, of, of getting back to basics and, and climbing off that big horse of ours. Yeah. And, you know, chefs are very egoistic people, you know, um, you know, they got, <laughs> yeah, they got their egos, you know, that's what it is. Everybody is the best, you know, and that's really that's really what, what it comes down to. But I think the positive side about this COVID nineteen, which we all experienced and still experiencing, is that we are all going back to basics, and we are all uh, realizing how vulnerable are we are as human yes. beings, and uh, yes. and that we do need each other. And that's why I think our industry, our chefing industry, being a very much of a global industry. Um, and you, James, and you, you, uh, um, uh, Yugesh, is that the, you know, we all very much involved in the global industry from true world chefs and our network, what we have, and it's so nice to have, and it's so good for the soul to have, uh, because there's so much depression out there now, even amongst chefs, uh, yeah. although they're very strong-headed people, but it is. But anyway, so. It comes to my last sort of uh, um, area of, of, of questions I would like to ask you guys. And this is obviously with the hospitality industry taking such a big knock. Um, there's young people out there who just come out of school and maybe a year ago they were thinking about becoming a chef. Now the hospitality industry, like I know for a fact in South Africa, uh, just spoke to recently to Wendy Arnold, um, I uh, mean, the Alberts, I beg your pardon, um, who is the chairman of the South, South African Restaurant Association. And she just gave me a figure the other day, which really, really scared me, of like 2.3 million people of the hospitality industry lost their jobs just in South yeah. Africa. And yeah. if I, if I multiply, that, multiply that by four, like each and every one of them would have like a, a partner and maybe one or two children, you know, this represents the, 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 the population of Austria of our whole country, which is just the hospitality yeah. industry in South Africa. And I'm sure in India, it's even a greater number than that because of the, of the of vast difference of population. But now the industry is down. So many people lost their jobs. Now the youngsters coming out of school want to become chefs. Do you still think that the industry, the hospitality industry is attractive enough for those youngsters to pursue and develop themselves in a career like in the hospitality industry. So maybe James, if you can start off with that. Uh, thank you, Martin. It's difficult to say that uh, you know this uh, profession of ours will die. It will never die. It is going through a metamorphosis, of, uh, reinventing itself. So my thinking on on on, on this uh this situation that uh, the youngsters are facing there is that uh they have to change our mindset people will always travel yeah. you know we are human beings we like to travel we like to see places right now in travel uh, uh sector there's a phenomenon phenomenon called uh the digital nomads guys that uh you know work with their laptops everywhere so it tells you that uh, it must stop so my, my, my advice to the, to, the, to, to, to the youth there, to the student, is that uh, you just have to go out there, set an objective and, and uh, know what you want to achieve from hospitality industry. It's unlike us when we were studying, we just uh, went to study, just we wanted to be chefs. But right now you cannot be just be a chef. You need to, to like, uh, like uh, you just said, you must be all-encompassing. Multi, 
is killed. And know that if uh, this doesn't work, I, I, I do that. So you, you, you need to be a, a, a person that uh, is flexible, adaptable to, to, to situations that are, are out there. So again, uh, in answering your question, is uh, hospitality a dying profession? No, it is not. People who go out and people like to be, uh, to be pampered, to be served food. So our profession is, is safe but we just need to reimagine re it and how it's going to look like in, in the future. So we yeah. need, yeah, you know the youth because their intelligence is a little bit uh, uh, raw and uh, they are guys who are susceptible to, to change, easy changes. So I think they can usher in this technology, uh, this, uh, this digitization of our, our hospitality better than us because we are hesitant. We are more... Uh, we are more conservative. So I think uh, the, the student, we need them. And I think they will usher in this digitization, uh, you know, phenomenon much quicker and faster. So we really need them in our industry. And I think the industry is going to boom again. If you look at uh, there was World War, World War in the past years, two World Wars, one and two, and there was a uh, pandemic flu, pandemics, polio pandemics, and uh, they went and disappeared. You know, I think we're going to go past this. Yes, it can take another three or four years, but we're going to come out of it stronger and better people. So our profession will grow much, much, much stronger. I believe in it. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Yugesh? Yeah, 100%. But Chef James have said, you know, it's, 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 uh, there are wars around in the world. There are pandemic around. It, it keeps on coming and going. But people are no, go, not going to stay at home forever, you know. I think by the year 2023, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at 23, not 22. By 23, world will be almost back to normal. And that's the time I think the requirement will be more and students will be less if, if we don't take care of the numbers at present. You know, because last year the institutes were closed. So the students have not learned properly. And, and many students have opted for something else, maybe in between, you know, but yeah. in the year 2023, it will be short in supply. Yeah. It will be demand and supply. Demand of students or the new professional will be more and supply will definitely will be less. Yeah. So this is the right time for students to opt for hotel industry because it will take two or three years for them to train well. And I think even World Chef uh, is uh, working hard on this. IFCA is working. We are all working. All the chefs are working hard to make sure that the students are trained well. We are going online classes, online competitions, whatever possible from our side, we are trying to do that, you know, and that's the need of the hour. And yeah. uh, as I said, as Chef said, you know, people are not going to stop going out. You won't believe in India, I don't know about South Africa, at present in India, you go to any resort property, it's full. Yeah. There's no place in resort properties. Yes, the, the, uh, the hotels in the cities are doing bad as far as rooms are concerned. But in resorts, there's no place. Wow. Most of the students are getting trained in resort properties now. One of my uh, cousin is working in, in Taj Fisherman Co. here in Chennai as well. It's in old Mahabulipuram Road. It's back-to-back 100% -back occupancy. Wow. Saturday, Sunday, sometimes it's so difficult to get rooms, you know, because people are fed up staying at home for last yeah. one and one and a half year. Yeah. They are That's taking true. care of they are taking care of all the uh, requirement, but uh, but uh, the demand is there. Yeah. In one of my my chef is working in Maldive. Maldive mostly have yeah. European uh, guests, but this year they are targeted Indian guests. You know, most of the Indians are flying to Maldive, and even the rooms are in Maldives are not available now. Yeah. So it's quite amazing. this is not going to stop. This is not going to stop. Yeah. Yes, the foreign currency earning is less. I understand because every country requires some foreign currency. Expats yeah. are not traveling much, but we are fortunate enough that India is a highly populated country. So we have in-house guests who are going and enjoying the resort. So 2023 sure. again, I'll repeat. I can see. You know, 2022 will not be that uh, that uh, good. But after March 21, I 22, I think. It will start building, and then by 23, we will be short of the uh, staff. So it's the right time for yeah. students to take the career forward from the here. Well, we've heard we've heard a lot of positive things from both of you, which is fantastic. You know, I mean, it's very very encouraging for our young 
listeners and and people who want to come in the hotel industry um because it, it is obviously obviously a a bad time but as you said uh, you guess it's a, i think it's the right time for people yeah. who yeah. want to come into the industry to come into industry now because it is two three year apprenticeship and when the hospitality industry starts booming again which we will, which we which we will experience it will definitely come you know people got to eat people love to be entertained and people love to 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 get served you know and and go into a restaurant and get spoiled by the chefs and by the by the waitress you know and um so yeah it is the right time to get into the industry for each and every youngster out there who's uh, currently listening and uh, and contemplating ah uh, should i become a chef or should i rather become a mechanic become a chef because mechanics you know you finish qualified you know whereas a chef you never you never qualify as my opinion i think you stay an apprentice for the rest of your life uh, but with 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 lots and lots of joy and joy in be able to serve others and um so yeah, with that in closing um maybe if you can just from each and every one of you again and i'm 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 really humping on the on the youngsters out there because i think this is our future of our industry and we're busy rebuilding our industry now through covid uh if you can just each from from each and every one of you can have just maybe some encouraging uh, advice of what if if a youngster would come to you now chef yugesh and say listen i'm thinking about becoming a chef what do i need to do to become a as a, a minimum as a good chef as you are what do i need to do see again i repeat uh, the training is very important unless and until you train well chef is a job of passion and uh, it's very important that chef cook from heart you know we we rarely cook from our brains you know brains are always working around but heart is important training training is very important ensure that you train well you will go and learn under a good chef it's very important if you want to be a great chef work under a great chef money will definitely come later stages maybe but unless and until you work under a great chef you will never become a great chef so these things are very important for each and every student to uh, to uh, uh, focus on training read books there are so many things available on the uh, click as i said you know uh, through net go through if you are not able to work in hotels at present go on the net try to learn cook at home because at home even if you are two or three of you all of there you can still cook and eat same food but training is very important yeah time will okay. definitely come motivation okay. is very important you keep yourself motivated be positive uh, if you think negative you are never going to succeed be positive uh, things are going to change it's not going to change overnight but as i said with in couple of years definitely things will change and we will be back to normal yeah so good, good things i always say good things good things take a while so like a, like a good a good wine uh, it takes a long time a good cognac takes a long time a good cooked meal takes a while to cook be cooked to become a good chef it takes a while so and you know you just need to keep on training and keep on being motivated so thank you for that uh, chef yugesh so Uh, James, uh, your word of advice for youngsters who want to become chef, and I know you got constantly people knocking on your door and asking, you know, chef, I want to become a chef. What can I do? Uh, in a, in you, a mentor to so many chefs in South Africa, um, you know, and people look up to you. So, what, what, what do you, what are you telling those people? Uh, normally, uh, when I speak to 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 the young guys, I always say that. Uh, you know it all start with your personality if your personality is a uh, wild that uh, which cannot be you know put in check it always uh, that's a wrong footing from the start i believe uh, in humility i believe in uh, you know the right attitude the willingness to to listen to also be led there's that problem of uh, most people even if uh, they are being led they want to lead the leader you cannot because uh, the person has got tons of knowledge and experience you know some some of the youth that coming out now the students are so well uh how can i put it they know everything you know because uh you can they, say chef you can say they full of shit <laughs> <laughs> they can google everything they they can know everything we we we, we 
where students who use books, they don't, they don't read books. They just Google it and it pops out for them. So it's easier for them. They, they, start, they, they, they are well opinionated. But I always tell them, just keep that in check. We know you know. Oh, that, uh, that's the characteristic of millennials, the new generation of guys. But if you want to go further in this profession and learn well and be respected, first, forget who you are, be an empty vessel, and allow yourself to be filled. Then after you fool, then you can come out and reshape yourself into what you want to be. Your uniqueness will come after you've learned from those guys that have the tons and tons of energy experiences so yeah that, that, that's always what i say to these guys and uh, mostly what i say to these guys is that uh, yes it's okay to 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 be paid uh, these top salaries but uh, unfortunately it salary comes with value hospitality is not uh, like other industries or disciplines here you need to to end your stripes then you can end that amount that you want you cannot want to earn money without experience. Yet you are a graduate. You spend so much money to get yourself, you know, to graduate. But now when you come up from a graduate school, you're coming into industry, you must relearn the theory that you learned in, 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 in schooling. And now you're learning professionalism, how things are executed properly. So you are also learning now practically. So don't expect to earn so much money that you want because of you think that you got a degree or a master's. No, no, no. Yes, we, we value your master's, but your master's can, cannot cook. Your master's yeah. can, be, cannot manage. So operation, like the other trait I always ask the guys that anybody can cook but then now we need uh, somebody who can manage money for us because at the end of the day, we are a business. Yes, you can be a talented cook or chef, but if you're not making money for an establishment, we don't want you. We don't need you. So we're saying that now the criteria for a good chef or student coming out of schooling is that you must be able to manage, you must be able to read finances. Then you're an asset to, to, to that employer that you're coming to work for. Yeah. So those grounding fundamentals that are needed right now to make yourself relevant as a, as a good student or a good young employee. Fantastic. Quick question. I had an interview uh, recently with the president of World Chefs, uh, Thomas Googler. Um, he asked a question and, uh, and I said, I will, I promised him that we'll ask you the question. And uh, because we were talking as about, about chefs helping others and obviously the, the, the topic came up of World Chefs Two Against Hunger. Um, I know I know it's been in your mind for many many years uh, because I've been keep on putting it into your mind, and and uh, I think this is something which we uh, maybe in the near future uh, will see from the South African Chef Association again the initiative of maybe running something like this. Uh, uh, on on I, I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not trying to put you in a corner. Or under pressure, but basically asking you, uh, first of all, sending regards from Chef Googler, the world president of World Thank Chefs, you. but also at the same time asking you if there's any development within the South African Chef Association that maybe in the near future we will be seeing uh, World Chefs do against hunger uh, coming up again. Uh, th thank you, Martin. Uh, thank you to, to, to our president, uh, Thomas Googler, for asking such a wonderful and honorable question. It's always uh, in, our, in, our, in our hearts or in our minds that uh, we will have to reignite sometimes because it is a brainchild of uh, our, you know, honorable Dr. Bill Kalaga. It is his brainchild. We, we, we don't, I'm a person who doesn't like uh, legacies to just uh, disappear. I like to keep the, the legacies and making sure that we remember the memories of the guys that are, uh, you know, built or laid foundation of uh, the whole structure of World Association and the association that constitute uh, it. We need to respect them. We must revive their memories and keep them alive. So we will make sure that uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have another uh, 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 World Chef's Tour against hunger. 
But uh, I think we are sort of disturbed with uh, with the COVID nineteen as well, also with the restrictions of travel. Maybe it will be maybe a different uh, world tour, Kenneth's hunger, where people can uh, participate uh, electronically, or you know, or post uh, monies, you know, without them being physically there. Because uh, I think if you really want to do it well, we must do it under normal circumstances where everybody can come in and uh, participate. Because uh, I think if we digitalize it, it will take, it will erode, you know, all these big memories, the great memories that it, it makes it. So I think that uh, we will still do it. I think it will be possibly, uh, like uh, you guess says, maybe 20, 23, 24, around there, we, we will do it. We'll make sure that uh, we do it as still, or at least I'm still the president. I'll make sure of it. Thank you. Yes, you will be. And uh, I think this is great news for everybody, um, for, for, for the commitment from the South African Chef Association to, you know, to, to honor the legacy of Dr. Bill Gallagher, of course, yeah. being yeah. his brainchild. And I think, yeah, I mean, Walsh, I, I know the last one I've been involved in 2000 and, uh, 2011, it was. Um, yes, yes. It takes it takes a couple of years to organize such a big event, yeah, yeah. but you yes, know what? Yes. Uh, the whole world is still talking about it. As I remember, just to maybe just throw some figures out, we had 143 countries uh, and yeah, 145 yeah. chefs participating in South Africa who paid each and every one paid their own way to come to South yes, Africa yes. for ten days, and we and, and we raised an enormous amount of money where we yeah, were yeah. able to feed over 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 30,000 people every day for, for nearly five years. Uh, yeah, and yeah. that, that I think, that should be the encouragement. And I think if we start planning in the near future, or the South African Chef Association starts planning in the near future uh, for a an event in, let's say, end of 2023, um, I think it would be absolutely fantastic. Because I think just one call from you, uh, Mr. President, um, to the two world chefs and their members around the world. I think those 150 spots you might have available uh, for people to come to South Africa, they will be filled within a day. Uh, people will be will be more than happy to come to South Africa and 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 to join World Chefs Tour Against Hunger, run by the South African Chef Association. And you know, I think one needs to think even further. Like you said, you know, one could do an electronic version of it. Uh, maybe closer to the time, or one could even go even bigger and say, let's make it an international competition or an international event and get world chefs involved in it and let world chefs be part of uh, uh, that bad, event bad. And, and go through the world chefs with uh, uh, the chefs without borders. You know, so yeah, there could yeah. be many opportunities. But just to hear from you, from your own uh, uh, mouth to say that it will happen again. That makes me very happy and it will make World Chefs President Thomas Gugler very happy and I think the community, the chefing community around the world even more happy. So thank you very much for that uh, James and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it and if you need any thank help, you, thank you. you know where I am. You can call me. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Thank, thank you very, thank much, you very chef. much, Chef. Thank, thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, thank you both for, for, for your wise words and your, your encouragement to the youngsters, encouragement to all the chefs out there in the hospitality industry globally. So, uh, Chef James, uh, President of South African Chefs Association, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you and uh, Chef ja uh, Yogesh Aurora, thank you very much for your time, uh, all the way from Jena in India. Uh, for your wisdom and it's so nice to have you both on, on, on our show um, and sharing your knowledge and your experiences in the industry and your experience over the last year of our pandemic COVID-19, the coronavirus, which hit us all so very, very hard in the hospitality industry. But talking to you guys, it encourages me uh, to, to do more and encourage, and I'm sure it will encourage our listeners to do more and be positive and knowing that the industry is not dead. We're just down on our knees at the moment, but we are climbing up. The one foot is up already, and, you know, it will not be long. We'll be all be standing tall again and, and, and doing what we love the most, to cater for our guests in our establishments, uh, being restaurants, hotels, fast food outlets, etc., etc., etc. So thank you to both of you, gentlemen. Um, it's been great chatting to you. Um, it's been absolutely amazing. 
and encouraging. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I'll still be seeing you hopefully soon in person. Um, once travel is allowed, we'll definitely make a plan to get together and have that good class of wine together and this great meal and, uh, and, and just talking about the industry even more. So thank you, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining me at uh, in my kitchen with Martin Cobalt, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.